Today I present my in-depth user review of the Canon M6 Mark II versus the Canon M50 when used primarily for video or vlogging. I'll talk about the clear technological advancements you can find in the M6 Mark II, but I'll also discuss some real from the heart things that I don't necessarily love about the M6 Mark II when used for vlogging and why the Canon M50 might still be better. But then I'll share one major thing that I love about the M6 Mark II for shooting video that kind of smashes the M50 out of the water and it's not the 4K. I'll tell you right now, it is a tough competition between these two cameras. And if you are searching for the perfect vlogging camera in 2020, I just hope you will gain some clarity from hearing about my personal experiences and opinions as I attempt to shed some light on this great debate. Hi friends, I'm Alicia and this is ABA TV where I help you level up your video production and vlogging skills, mostly using entry level to prosumer level equipment. So if one of your goals in 2020 is capturing stunning, professional looking footage without spending a ton of money on gear, then consider subscribing to this channel so I can help you along on your journey. And if you're interested in learning more about the Canon M6 Mark II or the Canon M50 specifically, then jump on my email list via the link below to register your interest about these cameras because I will continue to update you with the content I create about these two cameras specifically. Also, all of the camera and video production gear links can be found in the video description below. I greatly appreciate it if you use these links, especially if you learn something new from this video because it does help to support the channel so I can create more video production gear reviews for you. So the Canon M6 Mark II and the Canon M50 are pretty much like sibling cameras, meaning that they come from the same family, both being Canon crop sensor mirrorless cameras. Crop sensor mirrorless cameras are in contrast to full frame mirrorless cameras, which are going to be much larger and much more expensive. You gotta pay for that 8K. Over on the Sony side of things, these cameras would be compared specifically to the A6400 or the 6600. And the Sonys do have some benefits, but as a Canon user, many Canon users like myself tend to stick with the Canon brand because it's known for its superior color science, overall look of the footage and general ease of use while using the camera. I do believe that if you pair either of these cameras with the right accessories and technique, you can achieve stunning professional looking footage. And one of the most important accessories is lenses. Both the Canon M50 and the Canon M6 Mark II are M mount cameras, meaning that they take EFM mount lenses. You can also use EF or EFS mount lenses, which are created for the larger DSLR cameras. All you need is a small adapter, which makes everything a little bit bigger, but you can attach some really amazing lenses that way. And you probably know that recently Sigma released an amazing trio of EFM lenses that I have fully reviewed. If you want to learn about them, you can learn about them in this video right here. I do want to be clear about the fact that all of the demo footage shot in this video is shot with one of these amazing yet affordable Sigma lenses. And now for the comparisons. So the Canon M6 Mark II and the Canon M50 are about the same size, except the M6 is slightly wider and the M50 is slightly chunkier. The M50 also weighs 21 grams more, which really isn't much. You can see that I opted for this cool retro silver body on the M6. I just love the look of this one and I love when things are kind of different. I do have the M50 in the all black model, but you can get a really interesting all white model as well. They both have a great build and a great grip, except the rubber on the M6 Mark II is just ever so slightly more textured. The M6 Mark II also feels sturdier in my hand. There's just something about it that just feels more expensive in some way. And I also really enjoy that the dials are a little bit more clicky and they're just a little bit more sturdy and less fluid than on the M50. Now I will definitely cover some more of the features about the body in just a moment, including the flippy screen and the functions of the dials themselves. But first of all, I just wanna cover a few technical details. So the Canon M50 was announced in February 2018, while the M6 Mark II was announced in late August 2019. So the specs on the M6 are more advanced and it is significantly more expensive than the M50. I think this is simply because it's a newer camera, not necessarily because it's a higher level of camera, if that makes sense. What would really make sense is if we could compare the M6 Mark II to the Canon M50 Mark II, which doesn't exist. And unfortunately, I think we're still about a year away from that. So there are releases are kind of staggered, but this is what we have for the time being. So the main advancement with the M6 Mark II is the fact that it is truly a 4K camera, which is super exciting. This is the first time we have ever seen 4K at 24 frames a second 
uncropped in a crop sensor mirrorless camera body. These shooting capabilities here reflect what the M6 Mark II can do with the newly released firmware update. So side note, if you bought the M6 Mark II before say mid 2020, it's crucial to install this free update. I've got a whole video tutorial on how to do it and I even show you how to check your camera to see if you need it. On the other hand, the Canon M50 is marketed as a 4K camera, but that 4K comes with some serious restrictions. And personally, I have never even used the 4K because of these restrictions. So first of all, it's going to crop everything in, which isn't that big of a deal. You could change your lenses and kind of work around it. But on a more serious side of things, when you use the 4K, you are not able to use Canon's dual pixel autofocus. So that's the awesome autofocus that is in both of these cameras that is gonna guarantee your autofocus. When you're in 4K on the M50, it switches to contrast-based autofocus, which is what you'll find in like the G7X Mark III, and uh, it's just not that good. And when you're shooting 4K, that's when you really want that perfect, timeless clip, and the last thing you want is your camera hunting for focus during that time. It's just pointless at that point. But that being said, the Canon M50 does shoot amazing footage at 1080p. And in some circles, that's really all you need. Remember that when you shoot 4K, there's some serious downsides to it. So you're gonna have much bigger files. It's gonna be much harder to edit. You have to have a really good processor and editing system in order to edit it. And if the end goal is just to share it on social media, you have to realize that a lot of people are not even going to be able to see the difference and see that it's 4K. On the other hand, if you do want a really perfect timeless piece or you know video clip that you might use for stock footage or you might use in the future in like a demo reel you just really want the best thing possible then 4k is where it's at and that is what you'll get in the m6 mark ii i mean if 8k is a thing now then 4k is something a lot of us are going to want at this point on that same thread of image quality the canon m6 mark ii does have a brand new 32.5 megapixel cmos sensor same as the new 90d now this doesn't mean the sensor is larger it's still an aps-c cropped sensor, but it does mean there are more megapixels crammed into it. And according to tests performed by CanonRumors.com, this new sensor does show improvement in dynamic range at higher ISO levels than the 24 megapixel sensor found in the Canon M50. So a greater dynamic range means there's more depth of tone in the image overall, especially when the camera's ISO is set higher due to low light conditions. This enhanced dynamic range is also quite clear on the interactive graph available at Photons to Photos, which all of us geek camera review people love. And if this technical data bores you, then please enjoy this side-by-side -side comparison that I shot on both cameras at 1080p in fairly low light conditions. Can you see a difference? How about now? Moving on to autofocus. Like I said, both the M50 and the M6 Mark II use Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which is brilliant, works amazingly well, and it's got the face tracking setting that you can use, especially for vlogging, where it just tracks your face and everything is in focus pretty much all of the time. Not everything is in focus, your face is in focus. However, on both of these cameras, there's actually an extra layer to this autofocus called eye autofocus, where the camera locks directly onto your eye within the box that locks directly onto to your face. The eye itself is usually the preferred focal point on a person's face, so this is a very precise system. Now on the Canon M50, eye autofocus is only going to work when the camera is set in one shot mode. So this is primarily for photography. It can be used in video if your subject is not going to move around a whole lot. The preferred autofocus setting for video is going to be servo mode, which will track the subject all around. And unfortunately on the M50, the eye autofocus does not work in servo mode. However, it does work in servo mode on the M6 Mark II. Now, is this super important? Is it really, really going to make a difference? I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that it was in full effect during this shot. And you can see that due to the shallow depth of field in the lens, there are parts of her face that are not in focus, and that is by design. But thanks to that eye autofocus, her eye is certainly in focus, exactly as it should be. So that's kind of cool to see. Another important technological advancement in the Canon M6 Mark II is the fact that it fully supports the use of UHS-2 SD cards. So this is a newer, faster type of SD card, and you can actually clearly see the difference. There is an entirely second strip of metal 
that you don't find in the regular SD cards. And you can use these SD cards in the Canon M50. It just won't support the faster read and write speeds. So it's nice to have these cards, especially if you're working with the 4K files. And moving forward, even if you don't have a camera that supports it yet, if you're buying SD cards, you should buy these ones, especially for video, because they are the cards of the future as we move to bigger video files. Another major technological advancement found in the M6 Mark II has to do with photography, and that is the burst mode for taking photos. I absolutely use this all the time, especially with my ever moving child. It's also great for wildlife, moving people, sporting events, candids, all kinds of things. Anytime you just wanna capture a lot of photos, check this out. Now that is impressive. There is also a new raw burst mode, which is a completely separate operation inside of the camera menu that will shoot up to 80 plus raw images in a single burst. So some cool stuff there for photographers. The next clear technical difference on the M6 Mark II is the battery and its charging capabilities. So the battery is different from the one on the M50. It's about 20% bigger, so that is a win. And you can actually charge up the battery inside the camera using a USB-C charger. Um, that doesn't mean you can go and just get any gas station charger and plug the thing in. You've got to get one of the higher quality PD rated chargers, which are kind of like the new super power chargers, but it's totally worth the investment. I'll link to some below. They're like the latest and greatest charging systems that deliver the most power. But when you have this as a backup to your battery charger, it is absolutely huge because these USB-C chargers will charge like your laptop, your GoPro, your gimbal, all sorts of things. And I talk about travel vlogging a lot and part of that is minimizing your kit. And of course I would never say don't take this along, but it's so easy to lose something like this. If you were traveling with your M6 Mark II and you left this in a hostel, in Nepal, you can't exactly get overnight shipping from Amazon to get a new Canon battery pack charger. It's a very specific thing. So to be able to charge via USB cable is absolutely huge. It could absolutely save your life. And can you tell I may have been traumatized <laughs> by not having the ability to charge a battery at some point in my history of shooting with Canon cameras? Can you tell? Another upgrade on the M6 Mark II is the ability to shoot time lapses in 4K, whereas on the M50, you can only shoot them in 1080. And I think time lapses are one of those things that deserve to be shot in 4K. It's gonna give you much more flexibility if you wanna zoom in on certain things or add motion uh, within the time lapse to just make them more interesting. So that about wraps up the clear technical advancements of the M6 Mark II over the M50. And now I will get into two very debatable advancements. And the first of those is the ability to shoot at 120 frames a second. And if you don't know, 120 frames a second basically means shooting at super slow motion. So that's gonna be twice as slow as the normal 60 frames a second that you can find in either camera. But the debate here is whether or not the 120 frames a second works well enough to even be considered a feature. And this is a typical Canon thing to do. They'll kind of introduce a new feature into a camera, but then they will cripple it, so to speak, so it doesn't actually work very well. This is the case with the 4K in the Canon M50. So I first experienced this in the G7X Mark III. I was so excited to shoot 120, but when I got in there, it straight off the bat said, you cannot use audio with 120, which is fine. You probably don't need audio for like a slow motion B-roll sequence anyway. There's no uh, image stabilization, which is fine. And there's no autofocus at all. So then like, what are you gonna do? Shoot it when it's completely out of focus? It's extremely hard to manually focus on a point and shoot camera. So that made it pretty much unusable. However, I've been experimenting with the 120 frames a second in the M6 Mark II, and I think it works well because you can manually focus. And it's not something a lot of us might normally do, but it is kind of an easy thing to learn if you really put some effort into learning it. And because this is a detachable lens camera, all you do to manually focus is, you know, slide this ring around. And uh, one helpful trick is to turn on manual focus peaking. So that makes everything that is in focus in bright red. So you can really track what's in focus. And as long as you're not shooting anything super crazy, I mean, if you're shooting 120, you do want to be shooting some action. You don't just want someone standing there in super slow motion. But I think with some practice, this is definitely a feature that I'm excited about. I want to get better at shooting um, with manual focus. And yeah, 120 frames a second. You guys, I'm excited. Now the next debatable feature is more of a true debate in the fact that it's completely polarized. Some people love it, some people hate it. And that is the complete lack of a viewfinder. 
You guys, I have not put my eye up to a viewfinder since they invented these <laughs> live preview screens. Viewfinders can be useful for shooting video, like if you really need to nail your focus and you really need to see what's going on in the most clear way possible. Also, if it's very bright outside the screen and the details within it are very hard to see. So the viewfinder kind of blocks out all of that sun. So that is nice, but there are some times where it just doesn't even matter. You have to wing it if it's bright. Um, if the camera's on a gimbal or if you're like trying to fast track some motion, it's really hard to like hold this up to your eye and I just I just don't do it so for me this nice clean design is totally worth it to not have a viewfinder I know that photographers do like it they want to take their time to frame up their shots and to save face on the M6 Mark II with no viewfinder, they do have a separate viewfinder from Canon that you can purchase to pop right on top of the camera and it's really cute. I think it's a good win because either way we get to make the choice of whether or not we want it. And uh, just being able to make that decision is really cool. So I would love to hear, leave me a comment below, are you on team viewfinder or team no viewfinder? Some people are really upset about this, but I am not. And naturally this brings us to the elephant in the room, especially for vloggers, which is the main physical difference between the M6 Mark II and the Canon M50. And that is the flip up screen, versus the flip out screen. This was the main reason I did not have the urge to go buy the M6 Mark II when it was released. I saw the flip up screen and I was like, no, I love the flip out screen. It's a great design that Canon has had for a very long time. I don't think they need to change it. Um, but they did and I decided, you know, I think they had their hearts in the right place. They're kind of taking a page from the G7X for vlogging. Um, so I decided to give it a try and just kind of see if there might be some pros to it or if it was really not that bad. And it's really not that bad. So if we're talking about vlogging like this and we're just need to frame up the shot, kind of get the best lighting, just kind of see what's going on, maybe point to something in the background. It really doesn't matter where the screen is. I actually kind of like it up top. The side is great, but up top is fine as well. And if we're behind the camera shooting something high or low, it's important that the screen has that angle so you can angle the screen. Um, the M50, it can be angled a little bit more because it flips completely around. So hands down, I do like that better. But back to vlogging, the main problem with the flip up screen obviously is the obstruction of the cold shoe mount, which is crucial because when you're vlogging, you might want to put something there like maybe a mic or maybe a light or maybe a mic. I mean, we absolutely need a mic. That's why we have the mic input. So some people have created different things to kind of work around the issue. There's a relocation mount and just different rigs. And I do have a handful of accessories in my possession that I've kind of been trying out. And I'm gonna to put together a whole video on it, where the heck to put the mic pretty much um, on the M6 Mark II. So that video will be coming soon, but so far I have found issues with each of those accessories. So it's still a complicated thing that I haven't quite figured out, but I'm still working on it. Now, I would love for the difficulties to end there, but unfortunately they don't. So when I've got the screen flipped up, or flipped out like it is on the M50 right now. I didn't even realize how often I will go to the screen and kind of fix my settings. Like if I'm underexposed, I'll just kind of go in there and tap in some new settings. Um, and when the screen is flipped up and facing towards you, you can see right now that a lot of the settings, they're on the bottom, so you can't really access them well or access them accurately. So your first instinct is to go, oh, well, I'll just push the screen back a little bit and then access them. But when you do that, everything flips upside down because it senses that it's completely flipped upside down. And that is super annoying. And me being a person who just tries to make it work, I found myself one day like, oh, well, I'll just change the settings upside down. And then I'm like, what am I doing? This is ridiculous. Um, so like I said, I'm working on a solution for all of that, but there is one thing, and this is the final thing about the Canon M6 Mark II that I think smashes the M50 out of the water that I absolutely love. And it is something that helps alleviate my need to change the settings on the camera screen with it flipped up or change the settings on the camera screen at all. And that is, <laughs> sorry, I ran out of breath there. <laughs> That is the dials. So there is an entirely additional dial on the top of the camera, which makes functioning the camera and functioning the video settings so much easier. Because we get more control from these dials, we can rely less on the touch screen. So similar to the M50, the dial on the front will quickly control your shutter speed. And then the dial here will conveniently adjust your aperture. 
And here's the real deal. In the center of this dial, there is a function button which will allow you to change that front dial to control either white balance or ISO, which is huge. And if there's one thing I'm changing all the time to adjust exposure, it is the ISO. So the fact I can do that from the dial is absolutely amazing to me. And if you're a person who shoots manual settings for video, you are going to absolutely love this feature on the M6 Mark II. And if you're not a person using manual settings for video, then you absolutely should be. Go on over and watch my uh, best video settings for vlogging on the Canon M50 and uh, just to get a feel for the video settings and then let me know if you would like me to create a similar production for the Canon M6 Mark II. One final note is on image stabilization because I know you guys will ask. There is the standard digital image stabilization options, several options in both the M6 Mark II and the Canon M50. I don't really recommend using them. I don't use them myself because when you're using digital image stabilization, on the footage as you're filming it. It's gonna be burned into that footage. So it's not something you can remove later if it doesn't always work right, and it doesn't always work right. So uh, I like to steer clear of it. If I apply image stabilization digitally, it's gonna be in post, in Final Cut Pro, or even better, in Adobe Premiere. And I really think the best thing to do is to apply image stabilization hacks or just use a gimbal basically is the hack or just you know learn some really good uh, stabilized image moves there is no ibis in the camera which is in-body image stabilization canon cameras don't have ibis yet generally although they did just release a crazy new camera that is super expensive out of this league um, with ibis and you can get uh image stabilization in lenses but they're not they're not like gonna make your image perfectly stable i really recommend a gimbal for this and i've got a video about my my current vlogging setup uh, where I use a gimbal that works with these cameras. Although I'm not sure it's the best gimbal, I'm still trying to find the best gimbal for these cameras, but generally speaking, there is IS, but I don't use it just in case you wanted to know. So in conclusion, because I know a lot of you are wondering which would I choose, which is my favorite vlogging camera between the two of these. And you know, I can't really choose between the two. I enjoy both of them. I've been really loving the M6 Mark II because of the features like the new dials and the 4K and the 120 frames a second. There's just a lot more to experiment with with this camera. Um, but I know price is going to be a deciding factor for a lot of you. And that's good because I will firmly say that I think your best bet is to invest in the accessories with the camera. Like don't overthink the camera body. And if spending less money on the M50 body, which is a great camera, is what's gonna make sense for you. And that's gonna allow you to get one of the Sigma lenses or try out, you know, a cheaper gimbal or you know, a more expensive gimbal, get a really good neutral density filter and learn how all of these things are working together. Those things are gonna help level up your footage more than just having a better camera body, if that makes sense. I mean, ideally the M6 Mark II with all the accessories and awesome lenses would be your best bet. Um, the flip up screen's not ideal ideal, but I'm getting used to it. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Ideally, if these two cameras could just be married and we could have the best of both worlds from each one, I think that would be perfect. So that would basically be the M6 Mark II with the flip out screen or something like that. But we will see, maybe down the road. Either way, let me know your thoughts on it. I would love to hear which camera you like better if you're using either one of these cameras. And let me know what information you'd like to learn about either of these cameras soon here on the channel. Okay, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the very next video. Bye.